All right, next I'm going to talk about how we can use promises all method with fetch. So if you want to make multiple fetch calls, but you don't want to do anything with the data until you have all the data coming back to you, fetch and promise all work really well together because fetch, in essence, returns a promise. It Here's fetch. This will return a promise. So data file one, data file two, these two variables right here will actually be promise objects, which means they marry perfectly with promise all. So promise all, if we call that method, it's waiting for an array. The array will be the array of promises that we want this thing to wait for. Okay, so I'll throw an array in here and data file one, data file two, those are the two things that we're waiting for. When both of those promises have been resolved, the then method is going to be called. If there's going to be a failure, we would add a catch on at the end here. This will handle any of the catches. This will handle when all of the promises are resolved. So inside here, we're going to have an array that's passed into us. So this is all the files. And this is the method that's going to run. Now, the problem here is if these data files are JSON files or they're XML files, we're going to be calling the method on the response object. So this is the response object. This is the response object coming back from fetch. I've got two of them. On each of them, I need to call the JSON method or the text method to convert it. So I've got data file or files number zero. For it, I'm going to call JSON. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. So I've got both these objects, or I've got an array of objects. I'm looking at each one, and I'm calling JSON, calling JSON, calling JSON, every single one of them. But each one of those is, in turn, a promise. The JSON method doesn't just return the JSON data. It returns a promise that it will give you, at some point in the future, the JSON data from that file, from the response object. So I'm going to do a for each loop here, files.for each. For each one of the files that are inside this files array, I'm going to do this, but I don't want to just call this directly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it over to another function. So I'm going to have a, a function called process, we'll say. And this function is going to be expecting to get this. So what's this going to do? Well, this effectively is a promise, file.json. That's a promise object. It will resolve at some point. But I'm going to take this promise and I'm going to pass it over to this function. Down here, I guess I should fill this in just in case. There we are. Down here at the bottom, I'm going to create a function called process, or here, let's de declare it the same way. Let process equal a function. I'll make it an arrow function just to have fun with those. This is a promise that's being passed down to here. So I need a variable that'll catch it. Now this process function is going to be called twice because I'm doing two fetches if I had three things in the promise.all array. This would get called three times. If there were four things, it would call, get called four times. All right, so this promise needs to wait until it's resolved. So this is all we need to do. Here's the promise coming back from here. That's being passed in. We're going to use that inside of our process function to say, all right, when that promise is resolved, when we actually have the JSON data, that's when we're going to do something with it. So here is my data. So I have another function inside of here that's going to run when the data gets passed into here. And I know that this is going to be called twice immediately because these have already been resolved. This did the waiting until both files were back in the browser. So the browser has both of these things. So this for each loop that's calling process, it's going to happen like bang, bang, milliseconds. So we don't have to wait for the stuff to come back. And then the conversion of each of them to JSON, well, that depends on how big the file is. If it's a really big file, it might take a few milliseconds. If it's a small file, it's almost instantaneously. 
So the then method inside of process is going to fire basically immediately. Then we can do whatever we want. I'm going to put it inside this div up here. So we will say that uh, let p equal document create element p. So I'm creating a paragraph and the text content for the paragraph is going to be data. So that is this resolved. So it's the JSON object. And the files that I'm bringing back here, it's two copies of the same file. It doesn't matter if it's the same file or different files. I've made multiple calls for it. It has one property called numbers, which is an array. So back inside here, I'm going to say data.numbers and I'm just going to join them together as a string with a comma and a space in between each one. And then we got to put it on the page. So document get element by ID output, that is our div, and its text content will be equal to, oh sorry, not text content, we're appending it. Then child p, there we go. So process is being called twice. Each time it's called, it's going to resolve the promise from JSON. This data is the actual JSON object. We're going to get the numbers property, and it's an array. We're going to join it all together, so I'll get the string of the numbers, one, two, three, four, and we're going to put that inside of this div called output up here at the top. All right, let's check and see if this worked. Boom, there we go. So I got two paragraphs created. Inside the body, there's the div, and inside the div, there's the two paragraphs that we just created. Excellent. And that's all there is to it. That's how you can combine fetch with promise.all. Any questions, please leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.